are. We're doing, we're doing a video. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're going for it. Boom. Today, tasting a beer that has been aging for a full year. One entire year, almost exactly to the day. I brewed this on January 20th, 2018. Today is February 2nd, 2019. Oh my. All right. That happens fast, guys. You make a sour beer, you let it sit, next thing you know, a year happens, and you go, oh crap, I should do something about this. This is where, this is where I'm at. The original brew day, um, I talked all about this. I'll link that in the description below so you can watch that. This is a third generation sour from the same dregs. First one was a, was a, um, a black sour, sour black as I called it, that was brewed in uh, June 25th, 2016. And that was originally the dregs of Beachwood Propagation Series 128, Lady Face, Vallis Area, Libertine Wild IPA, and I had a Brett Cassini IPA, and a Growler with Lacto in it. That aged for 10 months initially. Then I did into a, another blonde beer. Then the blonde beer was June 7, 2017. And I add some more US005, US05, and slurry from that first sour black that was in 2016. Then the, the sour blonde, that aged for uh, up until I did this one. And that was a year ago. So here we are. It's the third generation. I, I'm going to, it's over tucked in the corner. I don't want to like pick it up because it's three gallons and move everything around and break pellicle on it. So I'll be back. I'll be back with a little taster of it and we'll see, we'll see how it tastes. There it is. Cool color. It's not like super red or anything, but definitely within the style for sure. It's very, very clear. You know, it should be as it's been sitting there for a while. I haven't smelled this yet. I have not tasted it. Um, I will say before I do so that the Sour Black, um, as I said, was one of the best sours I ever made. The blonde one that followed it was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. Not quite as good as the black. Part of that one went on to mangoes and that does taste very good still. One more truth. So I remember the sour blonde having um, this grapey thing to it, and same thing with the black. This redder one, this version here, same thing, sort of grapey. Yeah, pretty fruity. Uh, there's a, a little bit of a must in there, just a touch, but it's it's not terrible. But it's just a fraction. I can't describe what it is. By the sour. Let's see what the pH is. 3.1 holy crap okay oh man i almost it's almost too sour i might need to actually blend some of this um back just a hair that is very very tart i don't know that i can bottle it as is <laughs> i have to think of something uh i might just blend it with just a regular old beer you know plan a brew day and uh try and just do the same profile or really similar to it and just blend it back in. Uh, I hate to do that. I, I, I'm becoming a fan and just trying to knock a sour beer out of the park without blending it. But it's very common to blend these things. So it's not a big deal to do it. I don't even think I'd want to blend it with the regular sour beer because it needs to like be, that. it needs to go up to 3.5 and the pH 3.4 the very, very minimum. So I gotta, I gotta contemplate this. But uh, see what the next step, whatever I decide, you're about to find out right now. Here we are. Next step, kegging these, the Splanders Red Style. What I did, what I decided to do, was I brewed some sort of, I uh, brewed an oat brown. This was it there. Meaning, by this is it, I pulled off an extra gallon, and it's been sitting here for like a month and a half, almost two months, way too long to get to this. I'm gonna blend this with what I have left of the uh, the Flanders Red, I do have three gallons there. I'm not gonna do the full three gallons though. I'm gonna do it in this two and a half gallon keg. So the ratio was about one to three when I did some test sampling uh, because the other one is just too sour. So, or the main sour is too sour. This other one that's not sour, um, like I said, is about one to three. I'm gonna just, do a little under that, and I can, I can always dilute it a bit more, and um, meaning like make it less sour. Um, so I don't want to overdo it the first time because I, I can't come back from that. So I think what I'm going to do is do like 0 0.3 gallons of um, the non-sour beer, and then um, start filling it up. And when I'm about near the top, I'm going to take a sample and see 
Do I need more of the sour beer or more of the non-sour beer and top off the rest of the way? Now I'm gonna have a good gallon or so, maybe a little less, maybe, maybe a little more of this one. Let me, uh, let me just move this a little closer. There we go. So this one I'll have a little bit uh, less. I'm doing a brew day right now to fill this right back up within an hour or so of uh, emptying this out. Okay, so this is sanitized, this keg. I'm gonna get my equipment here. It's a little sour still, in my opinion. It is hard. I'm gonna glue it just a little bit more down. I have a little bit left in the headspace. All right, that's a half gallon total. I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I think it'll be close enough to tasting good. I'm, I am oxygenating the crap out of this right now, but I think when I put CO2 on it, it'll be fine. I found that if I do like the way I'm doing a kind of sloppy right now with an IPA, it gets oxidized really quickly. Sour beer, it only see me gets oxidized over time. Um, so the fact of putting CO2 on this right away, I think it'll be good. But uh, yeah, so how about half a gallon there to, looks like pretty much three gallons here on my uh, larger three gallon carboy. Uh, maybe 0.75 gallons left, something like that. I'm gonna put some CO2 on it right now. Okay, I'm good with that. It is purged. I'm gonna let it sit um, for about a week or so maybe two weeks, maybe, and give a taste test. So uh, yeah, coming up on the home stretch here. See you at the tasting. This is it. Made it. Carved, ready to go. There it is. Beautiful color. Um, it's pretty clear. It's kind of hard to tell because it's uh, condensation and whatnot. Um, it can maybe be a hair clear, but I don't care about that for, for this. Sours can be a little hazy. I poured this about, I don't know, a minute ago, and the head retention is staying on it pretty good. You know, for these beers, that's a big problem sometimes, the uh, lack of head retention. Uh, but it's hanging in there. So let's get right to it. So the nose off the bat is pretty fruity. There's a little bit of dank in there, though. There's a little bit of funk. Just, just a touch, though. Mussiness is not the right word, but something like earthy to to the smell but a lot of grape and these strains i've been using for the uh since the beginning of time since i used this has this grapiness to it and uh for all the beers i've done with it so um yeah it's wonderful in that regard so let's give it a taste wow i it's still tart i can't believe this is blended because it is still really rippingly tart it's super acidic you know i blended it and so that's crazy. It's still that hard. It tastes like in a 3.4 range. All right, uncalibrated. It's showing 3.2. It's hard to tell if that's accurate or not because, uh, again, it's not calibrated, but it, it tastes like it's in the ballpark. I guess I could have blended it even more with a base beer. Um, I don't mind it this sour, but it is. It's down there. It's complex. It's fruity. Mm, it's very, very drinkable. Um, it, that that grape, heavy grape uh, nose is transferring right into the beer just, just as well. Mm. It's very, very good. Clean, not weird at all. Super crushable. The only little slight little touch of knock I give it is the nose is a hair musty, um, but it's like a slight earth sort of weird funk mustiness going on. But this, it's still fruity. I have something I can keep culturing and reusing and reusing seemingly without a problem. And so long this puppy can last. Maybe I can do like, I don't know, dozens and dozens of, of beers with this. And I'm going to keep using it until it wears out. Until it's done done doing what it is. You know, if it starts to mutate or get a little weird, I might throw some bottle dregs um, here and there to kind of just see where it goes and see how it shifts. But the base of this is great. And worst case scenario, I just have to blend back to make it a little less acidic. But uh, yeah, so there you go. Another long age sour in the books. Another successful one in the books. It turned out great, and for those who, who haven't done sour beer, just get on it, just go for it. Before you know it, you'll have it. You'll have it. And the worst case scenario is you blend it, or worst case scenario, you dump it. But whatever, you gotta try, right? So there you go. See you next time. Stay tuned for more videos, and um, yeah, yeah, just keep doing your thing.
and keep getting weird, of course. Thank <laughs> you.